This remote Japan experience brings us to the train station. The railway system in Japan is possibly the most important lifeline for the nation. Without it, millions would not be able to go about their daily lives. Most importantly, the ever essential commute to work or school. In this video, we're going to take a look at some important points one needs to be familiar with to ensure a hassle-free, enjoyable experience that is the world-famous, punctual Japanese railway system. So please join us on this adventure and don't forget to hit the like button. Before we get on the train, we need to buy a ticket. Here's what a standard ticket machine looks like. It's a little confusing at first, but let's break it down. On the left are buttons to enable multiple ticket purchases at once. On the touch screen, you have selections for paper tickets. In blue, you can purchase and personalize a commuter pass. In pink, you can renew your commuter pass. And lastly, you can put extra money on your IC card. Here's what a couple of the more popular cards look like in the Tokyo area. These can be used for either commuter passes from point A to point B, or you can just put money on it and travel freely. If you're the kind of person who likes to keep it real and go old school, here are the paper tickets. Just put it through the machine and you'll know it's been used once it's got a hole punched in it. Okay, back to the ticket machine. The lower half here is the business end. Here's where you put your existing IC card. Next to that is for the bills. On the far right is for the coins. And this is where your money is returned. This is one function I've never used. If you need assistance, here's the help button. Now you might be saying to yourself, how am I supposed to remember the selections from the touch screen? This little guy right here, this will make your day a whole lot easier. All fare information will be displayed in English. Some machines are more helpful than others. This one here has several different language options, so if English isn't your thing, don't worry. It'll get you to where you want to go. All right, now that we've got a ticket, let's get through the gate. Pardon the rough look here, it's under renovations. As you can see, there's a designated in and out, which actually does change throughout the day according to traffic. As we approach, you'll notice several features on each lane gate. Here's where you put the paper ticket. Here's where you just touch the IC card. If you used a paper ticket, you'll retrieve it from here. This screen shows your card balance and the last shows an expiration date. Of course, not all gates are the same, but pretty close. You'll see moving closer to these gates, some lanes are designated for IC cards only. So it's a good idea to stay off your phone while heading out, otherwise you could be going through the wrong lane, causing a traffic jam, and be forced to hear the passive aggressive huffing and puffing out of the other passengers. Now that we're through the gate, it's time to go down the platform and get on the train. You'll notice this little yellow line right here. This is for visually impaired to help navigate down the platform and other places around Japan. Okay, I think we found the place we want to get on. And finally, here we are on the train. This is a very rare sight to see with no passengers. But let me assure you, these things get really crowded during rush hour. Here we have some advertisements. Advertisements are plastered all over every train. Of course, these little rings hanging from the overhead are to help keep your balance while you're standing. The sticker in this window identifies this car as a women's only car during set times during the day to combat the rampant groping problem that goes on. But we'll get into that another time. Here we have special seating, sometimes called silver seats. These are reserved for elderly, pregnant women, and people with disabilities. So, if you sit here, it's expected for you to give up your seat for those people. It's just a good practice to do this anywhere, really. This car also has a space for wheelchairs and those with strollers. Some of them even have restrooms. The newer trains have these displays. One shows the news, and commercials while the other gives info related to your location on the car and the station you're at and which station is coming next. 
also transfer information. These will definitely give you information in English and sometimes other languages. Here we have a slightly older version. The information isn't as detailed, but it includes all the necessary information that you'll need. If you can't read what it says, just wait a moment and the English version will show up. This strain is a little older and more local, so you'll notice that it doesn't have all the helpful displays and the PA system notifications aren't in English either, like some of the other bigger lines. Again, you'll notice the lack of passengers. I assure you, during normal times, it's quite busy. I guess this is one of the good points during the COVID problem. Here's a very nice feature on Japanese trains, the overhead storage space. It's great if you spent the day shopping and you don't want people kicking your goods. There really is so much more to take a look at when we're talking about trains in Japan. If you'd like to see more or have requests on what to see, I'd love to hear about it in the comments so that I can make a more specific video for you. This brings us to the end of this remote Japan experience on the basics of Japanese commuter trains. Thanks for coming along. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more remote Japan experiences, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. Also, leave a comment. Drop some ideas on what you'd like to see in future videos. See you on the next Remote Japan Experience.